What's up, guys? I'm Marcus. I'm Dana. And we are here to talk a little deeper on Do Gooder. Do good. Dana, what stood out to you as we are kind of getting ready for uh, this week's talk? It's so hard. It's so to hard. Say goodbye. It's so. It is so not simple. Even though do good sounds simple. Um, just like do no harm, there's lots and lots and lots to doing good. Yeah, and I, and I think kind of what we talked about with do no harm, there's the, and may, maybe this comes with growth. There's like the layer of when is good good enough? Mm -hmm. Of like yeah. how far yeah. are you, like are you pushed um, to go? And I think that like we're really good at, at telling ourselves that we've done enough. Oh gosh, yes. And so I think maybe it's, maybe it's somewhere in that like discomfort zone of just like, mm -hmm. Ju like stretching ourselves just a little bit yeah um, above me on what do you feel like is the hardest part of doing good oh gosh um well i guess for me thinking about the way that that um that we talked about it in um in the lesson is that john wesley quote the do all the good you can by all the means you can and all the places you can at all the times you can to all the people you can as long as ever you can. That is so hard to think about always doing good in any way that I can. Not just waiting for, not just being nice to someone and not just waiting for someone to ask me to do something for them or looking for an opportunity that it's the, yeah, that's like a full-time job. And I, I think yeah. we said the same thing about do no harm, mm -hmm. but it do, it really feels like it could be a full-time job just to try and follow this rule. Yeah. And I, I think especially in a in an age of like social media, when we're so aware of, of so much that's going on in the yeah. world, um, you know, we, we kind of saw this with some of this uh, pushback with some of the, um, the protests around uh, George Floyd of like, are we just being like social media advocates or mm -hmm. yeah. are like we proactively doing something? Cause like um, when they did like the blackout Tuesday or whatever mm -hmm. it was, there was like a lot of flack back that like yeah. all these corporations who didn't have a track record of, of like mm -hmm. living up to it, were doing it in order to kind of like grab some social capital. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think as individuals, we're also tempted by that as well of like, you know, leave a like for the hurricane victims. Of, yeah. Um, but it's like a deeper call to actually like, pro, how are we like proactively actually making yeah. a difference? Yeah. Are we so. just trying to look like we're doing good or are we actually doing good? Yeah. And that, yeah, that idea of, and we've talked about it in several different places, that idea of looking like a good Christian or are you actually living out? being a good Christian. And, well, and I think that plays into the, the the part that's hardest for me is like the idea of um, doing nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, mm -hmm. but in humility, um, putting others above yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and especially like looking at that Luke 3 quote with, from John the Baptist of anyone who has two shirts uh, should yeah. share with the one who has none. Mm -hmm. And anyone who has food do the same. Yeah, that's um, hard. Yeah. Because uh, think about how much stuff we have yeah. and we just hold on to. Like, I mean, it's kind of like a running joke that, like, how, how many purple shirts do yeah. Marcus and Dana own? <laughs> yeah. For the purposes and, and, of these videos. Yeah. And how many do we really need? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and yeah, there's that, ten, that temptation to hold on to something because you might need it. And, um, and I think, I think for some of us, it's like a generational thing. Because, um, you know, at some point our grandparents um, lived through the Depression yep. and things were so hard. And so then they passed on to their kids that, you know, you, you hold on to things because you never know when you're going to need them. And then that gets passed down and passed down. And, um, and though I do think that, um, that there is work being done um, by some of the younger generations to kind of move away from that. But I think there's like it's kind of it's so innate for a lot of us to, even if we're not truly hoarding, but we're, we are kind of hoarding. Let's, yeah. I, I need to hold on to this because I might need it. And that's something that we've been taught. 
Yeah, we've talked about it other times um, as a church of having a position of abundance or mm-hmm. in a p- position of scarcity. Yeah. Um, and I think especially when we go through stressful situations like the Great Depression with our grandparents mm-hmm. or um, some of like the hoarding mindset that's going to come out of this oh, gosh, COVID yeah. pandemic. And that we've seen like people right. hoarding toilet paper or the, the, the guys that bought all the sanitizer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, like, you know, we almost have to like fight against that of, um, that there is an abundance that there, that God does provide. There is enough to mm-hmm. go around and that by us holding on to things that we don't really need, mm-hmm. we're actually like proactively taking away from, yeah. from a good in the world. Yeah. Which is hard to, yeah. And then, to and then it's, at it that way. it's difficult to get into the place of like, well, where's that line? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that we talked about on our parent call um, at the beginning of the month mm-hmm. um, when we were kind of like previewing, hey, this is what we're going to be talking about with simplicity. Uh, one of the things I brought up there was this book by um, Kendra Kesey Dean, nope, by Rebecca Conadike de Young called Glittering Vices. Mm-hmm. Um, and she talks about um, uh, the, the vice of greed. Mm-hmm. And how when if you have two coats, you've stolen one from the poor. Yeah, and that's like a that's really hard. Well, and even to use that language of yeah. like you've stolen it. Mm-hmm. Because I think we just look at like, this is my stuff. I've earned it. I've yeah. it's mine. Like Yeah. I've worked hard for it. It's mine. Mm-hmm. And like we get such a sense of kind of entitlement to the things yeah. that we have and the things that we own. Um, and I think we lose we lose sight of that like that spirit of abundance that like this isn't mine. This came yeah. from God. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. If it wasn't yours to begin with, and it's been a gift that's, it's a gift that's been given to you, then it's a whole lot easier to then share that yeah. than than if you're, yeah, no, I worked for this. I earned this. It's a lot harder to give that up. Yeah. So. One of the cool ways I've seen that kind of play out, though, um, they see a lot is in in families with young kids, mm-hmm. where they're there's a lot of sharing that goes on, mm-hmm. which seems really cool because like when you think about kids' clothes, they are more expensive than they ever should be. Oh gosh, for yes. For the amount of fabric yeah. <laughs> that they actually contain. Yes, and for how long the child can actually wear exactly. the yeah. garment, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but like we've, we've been very fortunate to have like received hand-me-downs mm-hmm. and um, there's really just like a, a sharing like Kind of almost like it takes a village mindset mm-hmm. um, with people who have kids slightly older than us and us who have kids that are slightly uh, younger than some of our friends mm-hmm. or uh, and that, that kind of sharing eco mindset. And I feel like that's probably more along the lines of like of what we're, we're called to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when we look at some of the early passages in Acts, it talks about, you know, they uh, had a common purse, which means like they pulled yeah. all their resources together and shared everything in common. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's such like a foreign concept in like m- normal everyday like yes. American life. Absolutely, that's a hippie thing. That's what, yeah. <laughs> you know, living on a commune. Yeah. But that's but yeah, but that's what that's what it tells us that they did as a church was that they they did live that way. They did share, and uh, and there's, there's something that sounds so beautiful about that, but at the same time, so scary because. You know, I've got to rely on other people and yeah. Uh, yeah. One of the ways I've seen that um, kind of played out is this idea of like health insurance. Mm-hmm. And you see some of those ideas of like, um, like faith share plans mm-hmm. where it's not like an actual like insurance company, but it's just yeah. like a pool of, of money, money that people yeah. put into. And like, and that's scary. Yeah. yeah there's like <laughs> yeah. some anxiety about that. But yeah. And I think also with the way that we, we view our stuff as like status symbols. Oh yeah. That definitely feeds into it. That also makes it harder for us yes. to then like share that thing. Absolutely. Because if I forego that status, mm-hmm. then like I'm doing without and I've, yeah. I have literally, am I? yeah, I've lowered myself yeah. within like the social structure mm-hmm. of my school or my team or or my neighborhood or whatever it may yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Yeah. And if it does, it shouldn't. And if it's what, so what is that quote? The, the people who mind don't matter and the people who matter don't mind. Um, yeah. Like if, yeah. Which is, 
you know, way easier said than done, but if we could look at it that way, it would make this a lot easier that the people who do matter aren't going to care what brand you're wearing or, but yeah, it's hard, especially when you're, especially when you're a teenager and trying to figure out who you are and what defines you. And that's a very hard thing to put aside. So, yeah. So I'd, I'd be curious, uh, as we kind of think about do good, um, what's an area that you're kind of thinking of uh, focus for around that this the simple rule of, of doing good? So one of the things, and you you um, you touched on it, that whole idea of the um, social media and are we just being advocates? And and, and so it's um, it's one of the things that I've been thinking about in my life a lot. Um, lately is um, things that I, I know need to change and am I am I just hoping that they'll change or am I am I just saying this needs to change or am I actively working to make them change um, and it's something well Brian and I both have been talking about this a lot lately and it's um, it's something that we, when we have money that we want to donate to a cause, um, we have a couple of different causes that we normally would donate to, like Zoe or the Methodist Home for Children. Um, and then this last time that we were looking at money to donate um, was right after um, the um, all of the protests um, around um, the um, the shootings and killings of, um, of unarmed black people. And uh, when, when things were really kind of coming to a head in like April. And so what we did is we sat down and we started talking about, okay, what do we really feel like needs to change? Like what are the things that we feel like are really important? And, um, and so this might be going farther than anybody wants to hear. But, um, but we talked about things like ending the, um, the unqualified immunity. Um, that that idea that police um, can just do um, do whatever kind of property damage they want to, and um, because they're police and they're doing it in the line of of duty, that like there's nothing that could happen. Like there are people who have had their homes completely destroyed by SWAT teams. And there has to be like a predefined uh, precedent, yeah. and it's really hard to get a precedent. Yeah. yeah, and and so and you know, and these are you know homes of people who had absolutely nothing to do with the crime that was being investigated, but they have no recourse, and now they have no home, but there's nothing yeah. they can do about it. Collateral damage. Yeah, um, and so and that idea of um, that that's just okay. Some of the police reforms that we feel like need to happen in order to make things safer for everybody. Um, and so, um, what we, what we did is we started looking for groups that supported those kinds of things. And so instead of just giving our, which we, you know, the, the causes that we were giving our money to are still important and we will still continue to give money to them. But this was the first time that we sat down and said, okay, here are the, the changes that we feel like need to be made in our laws and our justice system and what groups really support those and yeah. let's give our money there because um, you know I can write letters and stuff but I don't know that that's really me yeah. writing a letter is going to make a difference but if we can get like it, we will give into the equal justice initiative who is is trying to make sure that that the justice system is fair to everybody and um, and the innocence project which is trying to get people who have been wrongly accused and um, or wrongly convicted um, and sitting in prison and are completely innocent, it's working to get them out of jail. And, um, and so we felt like those things were really important and that was how we wanted to be, we wanted to see good done in the yeah. world and how we wanted to do good. So then we really focused our attention on Let's give money to those causes. Let's not just sit around and say this is what needs to happen, but let's support people who are supporting the things that are going to make the changes. Yeah, I think it really changes your understanding of like what it means to be a citizen, mm -hmm. because um, it's really, especially as our our kind of like sphere of knowledge or or whatnot gets bigger, it's really easy to kind of dissociate ourselves from uh, the change that we want to see, mm -hmm. and we think that like 
well, they should do something about that or like yeah. the system. Yeah. Um, and it, it kind of hones us back into the question of like, well, no, like how can we, uh, how can we be the change that we want to see in yeah. the world? Like how are we active participants? Yeah. Um, you know, in, in whitewater rafting, they say like, how you be an active participant in your own rescue. Mm -hmm. Like how are we being active participants yeah. um, in our community in order to make it the better place to, to do the good that we want to see rather than just yeah. passing it off on yeah. some like- Don't wait for them yeah. to fix it. Do what, what you have in your power yeah. to fix it, yeah. And sort of like going to Washington and giving a very stern talking to all of the politicians about what needs to happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this was the way we felt like we could we could make those changes um, more possible. So. Well, cool. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Um, so one of the things that, that has come to light for me here recently is um, I have a, a coaching call that I have every now and again. And one of the things that has kind of been highlighted is like how much I want to uh, control things. Mm -hmm. I've been called uh, type double A. <laughs> and uh, part of the reason I want to control things is, is because of, of how much I care about what people um, think of me like personally and professionally. So like social media is not a big thing for me, but it's actually more along the lines of um, how am I humbling myself in my like personal interactions mm -hmm. um, because the only reason I have social media is to have ownership and control of the youth accounts, <laughs> uh <-huh. Yeah. laughs> um, which is why I'm, I'm not particularly great about posting stuff and uh, being engaged on them. Um, but uh, like in my own personal relationships, like there's, there's a lot of, of weight that's placed on those. Mm -hmm. um, and so how can I humble myself and like uh, put others' needs or, or other people above uh, my own self-interests mm -hmm. um, in order to, to do good within those relationships and be more, uh, more Christ-like in that, so. Gotcha. Yeah. You lost the light. <laughs> well, a light went, just went out, which means it's time <laughs> it's for us time to go. Done. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys uh, thank for watching you. with us this week and we'll be back next week.